that ends our discussion for today. We will be having quiz on Friday. Please be prepared. We still have 10 minutes left. Oh, by the way, Trisha and Del, please come here. Why did you call us, sir? Ah, well, the principal and I talked about the upcoming speech competition about to be held at Bridge High Net. Now, she asked me to select students who excel in my class and I figure out you two is interested in joining. Although the principal said to select one, so I need you to write a speech about making a difference. When will we pass it, sir? On Friday. Noted! This week! Yeah, it doesn't matter whoever you speak. Obviously, I will win. I already have an excellent concept in mind. Well, that's what makes you happy. Oh, someone's calling. Is it done? Oh. Hey, Don, why did you call? Don, I'll try, but here's what I learned. Well, basically, academic writing is a formal and rather impersonal mode of writing that is intended for a scholarly audience. It also tends to depend heavily on research, factual evidence, opinions of educated researchers and scholars. The main aim of academic writing is to inform the audience while providing non-biased information and backing up the writer's claims with solid evidence. That's what I've learned. Hope it can help you. Okay, okay. No, it's fine. Non-academic writing is writing that is not intended for an academic audience. They are written for a lay audience or the mass public. This type of writing may be personal, impressionistic, emotional, or subjectively natural. Oh, okay, I understand. So, the language is non-academic writing. Formal, informal, or casual? Yes, and some examples of these texts are newspaper articles, memoirs, magazine articles, personal or business letters, novels, websites, or even text messages. Yes, yes, thank you so much. That is good to know. Well, I have to put this down. I still have a speech to write, you know. Okay, alright. Good luck tomorrow. Bye. Thank you again. Bye bye. It's fine. I'm glad to help you. <laughs> alright, bye. Time is up. Pass your papers forward. Trisha, would you do the honors to start? What is making a difference? For me, making a difference is enacting a change, implementing a reform, changing something about yourself. For the everyday student, Making a difference could mean a change of routine, a change of character or attitude, a change of study habits. For the ambitious, making a difference could mean changing the lives of the people around them. I think that it making a difference is a need in our country. We must take the lead and inspire other people to follow us. Whoever wants to make a difference, whoever wants to be a world changer, must first see the defects in himself. Before changing others' lives, one must first change oneself. Nice work on delivery teacher. However, I noticed some grammatical errors. You should look into that. Um. To make a difference does not have to be grand. Starting with small things can already make a huge change. Other than doing things to make a difference, we should also seek to influence others to start doing things that make a difference. And the best way to convince others is to lead by example. Start doing whatever is within your ability today. Start putting more effort in your work to increase the value of your output. Because for every effort counts, and no matter how small and significant it may seem, always remember to just do something, and do something good. Well done, that speech was good! Imagine being confident even if your grammar sucks. Imagine being Hey Abby, what did you do that for? I heard her bragging about being chosen because her concept is inspired me so Oh, I also heard that yesterday, but um, I think Del is fine with it. But you shouldn't do that again. Never.
Tisha. Um, I just came here to talk to you about yesterday. Can I come inside? Are you okay, Tisha? You know what Abby said. It, it, it's it's okay. It's my fault as well. Actually, treasure piece was good, and you don't have to be embarrassed about it, since we all commit mistakes. Thanks, Del, but you don't really have to sugarcoat it. I know I this needs revision. You know, Trisha, if you want, I can help you with revising your paper. Okay. Well, first, you should start with formality. Formality reflects the writer's ability to choose and use proper or formal syntax depending on the kind of paper or writing required. Avoid using trite, which is an expression or idea which through repeated use or application has lost its original freshness or impressive force, and colloquial, which is an appropriate but ordinary or familiar speech, which may be noted as an informal way of communicating. Caution. The importance of cautious language must always be observed in academic writing. Caution may also be referred to as hedging or vague language. Generalization, a written or spoken statement in which you say or write that something is true all of the time when it is only true some of the time. That's what is the objective. Objectivity, being objective suggests that the writer is concerned about facts and not influenced by personal feelings or biases. The writing must be based on facts, research, or actual data and is unopinionated. Avoid the usage of personal pronouns, suggestive or emotive words that shows prejudice.